five, which tied the record set by Max Sanders, who is now the basketball coach here at Libertyville High School. But Andy Jansen is looking today to try to get something going in the air. This is something that Stevenson has not been prepared for as far as the coaching staff here at Libertyville is concerned. They feel that perhaps we can throw the ball. No team has really tried it on the Patriots this year. We feel confident considering what we have behind center and what we've got out on the flanks to be able to get something going via the air. Well, and Jansen is on a record-setting pace already. The school record's held since 1981, and he's only about 230 yards short of that. He's been throwing for over 100 yards a game now, so you know he's got the arm to do it. He's already tied the school record for 10 TDs. Yeah, five in one game, but still, it's a pass attack and they really think that they can do something with it tonight against the Patriots. Tyler Coleman, another guy out of the Libertyville backfield that you're going to want to keep an eye on. And as you were talking about Andy Jansen, he is just several hundred yards short of the school record for passing yards in a season. That not held by Max Sanders, however. But we've got a good one set up this afternoon, though, with the homecoming and all. It should be a great afternoon of football. Well, and I think it's these two schools, you know, their borders touch, and I think the rivalry is there, and homecoming here in Libertyville, I, it's just an outstanding day. You know, we couldn't have asked for a better afternoon. Teams being introduced right now, great crowd on hand. And, you know, this is an interesting matchup when we think about homecomings. Remember back about three years ago when we did this ball game, the Stevenson Patriots didn't bring their bus up until 10 minutes before kickoff. We're wondering what's going on, what, what's happening. Homecoming here, Bill Mintz playing a little bit of a mind game over there, and it worked out because the Patriots just blew out the Wildcats on Libertyville's homecoming. Well, and look at the, the teams that the Patriots have put together in the last several years. Their size, you know, kids averaging 250, 270, 280 in the line. Huge kids in a pounding running attack. Now this year they've got backs that are smaller, but they're so quick and so explosive off the ball, and they've got an adequate passing attack. It's, you know, Ryan Keller, who's now gone on to the University of Kentucky, to, has done an outstanding job, and yet they bring in another quarterback year after year, and it's, it's done so well for them that they are just a well-oiled machine. And like you said, with this rivalry and with it being homecoming, I really think the Wildcats, if they play a good, solid game today, you know, this one won't, this will go down to the wire. Big game for the Wildcats, big games I should say between this week and next week which closes out the regular season with only five victories right now. If the season was to end, the Libertyville Wildcats would not be playing in the postseason. They need to come up with a victory in their next two games, today against Stevenson or next week against West Chicago to get the necessary six wins to be a part of the postseason. But a tough chore ahead of them this afternoon as the Libertyville Wildcats get ready to kick it off with the Stevenson Patriots. <laughs> Back at Libertyville High School, the team's coming off the field right now after doing the ceremonial pump up, getting ready for the kickoff. Libertyville coming in, as I said, at 5-2 on the season, 5-1 in North Suburban Conference play. That lone blemish was against the Lake Forest Scouts several weeks ago, in which they lost 21-14. As for the Stevenson Patriots, well, last week they beat the Lake Forest Scouts in a ball game you saw here on the Jones Intercable System, 31-22. They led it 24-0 at halftime, and then Lake Forest got their act together and were able to put 24 points up on the board. However, it fell short, and Stevenson, in front of a huge crowd on Friday night, comes away with the victory. They'd like to keep it going tonight, this afternoon, and what a great rivalry between these two ball clubs. A little bit of hatred between these two. Sure, respect is there, but as far as getting out on the field and doing it, these guys just really want to go after each other. And strange as it may seem, we've got confusion already. Butterflies or not, they're not sure which side we're starting out on. Libertyville had several guys running down to the north end of the field. Now they're coming back to the south. Stevenson had guys south that should go north. Finally, we got it all figured out. Brian Hamlet and Tyler Coleman will drop back deep for the Libertyville Wildcats. And to do the kicking for the Stevenson Patriots will be Jeffrey Lyons. 
Randy Kuzieski, the head coach of the Libertyville Wildcats, taking over this ball club in his third year. Now Bill Mitz has a tremendous record over there at Stevenson High School. But last year, a disappointment, being eliminated from the playoffs in the second round by York. And this is a ball club on a mission. Not only do they want the conference title, they want to be able to make some headway in the state playoffs. Lions is set to kick it off. And we're underway at Libertyville High School. Kick taken by Mike Morosky. Not a guy too familiar with handling the football, and he gets it out to the 22-yard line. And that's where the Libertyville offense will come out onto the field to start this afternoon's ball game. Libertyville, as we said before, a team that will probably put this ball in the air more often than you would think. They feel that the passing game, which has been successful as we talked about at the top of this cast, can make some headway this afternoon. And Andy Jansen brings them up behind center. Brandon Smythe, the lone running back behind Jansen on first and 10 at the actual 23 yard line. And here's Jansen. On his hip, fires it across, it's complete. And they're gonna have a first down, Brandon Smythe, 12-yard pickup. Interesting the way that started out, Chip. Jansen tucked the ball like he was gonna do an end sweep, and that's always been a, a real powerful part of the Wildcat offense. All of a sudden, he put the brakes on, and they knew they were dead because they had the man in the short zone, and he took it. So Jansen hooks up on his first pass attempt of the afternoon, and it's first down, Libertyville. Again, Smythe, the lone running back. And here's the give inside. Tyler Coleman breaks a couple of tackles, gets out to the 40-yard line. A pickup of six on the play. Excellent read by Coleman. You saw when he got to the line of scrimmage, I think the play was supposed to go off tackle. The hole wasn't there. He did the little stutter step and kicked it outside. and Got a good solid five and a half, almost six yards. You know, Coleman's another good one, too. This guy can run the football. It's a nice compliment of the run and pass for this Libertyville club. Well, and, and I think the difference in the Wildcats this year is they don't have that big, bruising fullback like they used to. They're a much more balanced attack than we've seen in the past couple years. And that's Coleman in motion again. He gets the carry. And this time, he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. The Stevenson Patriots read that out beautifully. And Parker Dotson steps in to make the hit number 66. Slow developing play and good penetration on the part of the whole left side of the Patriots really took that play away before it even got going. And the Stevenson Ball Club last week, Jerry, if you remember, was exploited up the middle by Lake Forest in that second half. I'm sure that's something that Bill Mitz and his staff were working on this week to try to tighten up. Salzman in motion to the far side. Jansen looking for him, fires it to the outside. He's got Salzman. That's going to be a first down out near midfield. Locked on to Salzman. The minute he took off from the line of scrimmage, Jansen went back in about a five-step drop, had his eyes glued to him right away. Something in the past, remember, Chris Fulbright always had that capacity to check off his receivers and deceive the defensive backfield by looking the other way. Jansen just glued on him right away, but threw a nice strike, and it was good for the first. Jansen in his first full year as quarterback of the Libertyville Wildcats, a senior. Had to wait his turn, but has been effective since he got in. They go right up the middle with Smythe to the right side. Very short gain on that play. Adam Butler puts a hat on him right there for about a one-yard pickup. That Adam Butler, there's a guy, too, that can really lay the pads to you. Came up with a big fumble recovery last week, which led to an eventual touchdown. Now that's been one of their strengths out of that linebacker core, and he certainly is a good one. Second down and nine now for the Wildcats. The ball just across the midfield strike. Underway first quarter of play here at Libertyville High School. Uh -oh. And here's Jansen. Fires it to the outside, incomplete. He had a man wide open, and Mike Jones streaking down the sideline. Uh, check that, it was Mike Wisner. 
But he overshot him. He was wide open, and that's six of those two hook up. And, and yet I said, uh-oh, because that defensive end got pulled in right away for the Patriots. I really thought Jansen probably could have tucked the ball and I think run for the first down on there because to throw off the run, and we talk about this every week, is a very difficult thing to do. He probably had the room to get for the first down because everybody bid for that inside fake. Get greedy. Oh, yeah. He, he's behind the defense. Third down and 10 now, and Jansen will go from the shotgun. Back to throw to the outside, and it's incomplete. Adam Salzman thought he had the reception after the ball came out of the hands of Tyler Coleman. He made a diving attempt for it, but the official right there saying it made contact with the turf first, so the pass ball is incomplete. Great hustle, though, on the part of Salzman to back up that play. Well, and really credit Jansen with standing in there and, and taking it just a heck of a shot as soon as he got rid of the ball. Brian Hamlet will punt it away. And it's a high kick. And a fair catch is called for by Michael Jurassic. And the Stevenson Patriot offense will come out onto the field for the first time. And while we have this chance, let's throw it down to the sidelines. Dave Kazukas. And he said they have to mix the pass with the run. And they could not turn over the ball once. And they have to be mistake free the whole game. Thanks a lot. Actually, Chris Childers down on the field. You may remember him from Hawthorne, uh, actually, Eagle Vision doing a nice job. And the Patriots keep it on the ground, get out to the 32 yard line. Kyle Brandt, the ball carrier, picked up about four on that play. Kyle Brandt, that kid is a bull coming out of the backfield with his power and then to have it complemented by Clancy's speed is a nice combination. Well, and you look at the way these two backs are built. You know, they're, up, they're short and they're stocky, but they're strong. And we'll talk about their incredible leg strength all day long because that is just one of their biggest functions that they do all day is explode. And here's Butler now. Short gain on that play as he gets out close to the 35-yard line before he's wrapped up. Tim Beschel. Getting a hand on him to bring him down. Tim Beschel, yet another of the great linebackers that are wearing the black and orange for Libertyville High School. Well, and Tim, I believe this is his fourth year of being on varsity, and every year he just comes up and gets better and better and better. And uh, Max Sanders talks about what he does during the basketball season. He has to take that football mentality out of him, but right now he's a headhunter. Third down and two. And the give is to Brand, who's got the first down as he gets out to the 40-yard line. Pick up a five on that play by Kyle Brandt, and they'll move the chains. You know, notice the way the Patriots come in an offensive set like that, Chip. They go with a full house backfield, three right across. They fake one way, fake the other, give it to the third man, and that really freezes the linebackers, makes them take that extra step back and hesitate. And with the explosiveness of these backs, boom, they're into your backfield quick, and they get the first down. Patriots, a team that if they can put points up on the board early, are really tough to come back on. As Cervic drops back to throw all day to throw it, and it's picked off. And a flag goes flying as Mike Ward comes up with the interception, and flags are coming up on the Wildcats sideline as Randy Kuzieski's trying to get his players out of there. Mike Cervic stepped over to push Ward out of bounds. What a big play, you know, as soon as I saw the two backs go down and the receiver into that zone, they did a little crisscross, just an X in the middle. You knew that's where they were trying to throw it. The pass was underthrown. You gotta wonder if Cervic looking into the sun, if that affected his vision, because that pass was well short and the receiver was not open. Now, after the interception, we got a penalty and the way they're shaking hands out, or clapping hands on the, on the Patriot part makes you wonder what the heck they're doing. Boy, Cervic had all day to throw that football as well. Now, you had tremendous celebration on the sideline for Libertyville, and the officials are talking it over with Randy Kuzieski and his coaching staff. There was some type of a late hit. I believe once they were out of bounds, a little overly uh, aggressive, we're seeing a personal foul call against the Patriots. I think there was just a little frustration. Somebody came in and laid the wood, and they were already out of bounds. Gives him first and 10 on the 34. Just a big break for the Cats. Huge interception by Mike Ward. 
Picked it off at the Wildcat 41 yard line. Got a nice return inside the 40 of Stevenson and now you're tacking on the penalty. So the Wildcats in business now at the 24 yard line. 7.31 left to go here in the first quarter. And here's Colt dropping back. Stutter steps for a moment, keeps it, cuts it back upfield and gets down to the 20 yard line. A four yard pickup on the play. It was setting up to be a halfback option as Jansen rolled out left but Coleman decides to keep it and picks up four. Well, and I think Coleman probably made a choice that when he sees this on film, he's gonna wish he went outside because he had the entire flat open to him. I think he could have run for the first down. And it'll bring up a second down and six now after the pickup. Ball at the 20 yard line in Libertyville trying to capitalize on the Stevenson turnover. And Salzman has it, and he's gonna be down near the 10 yard line, which will be good enough for a first down. 10 yard pickup by Salzman on the reverse. Credit the interior with the offensive line of the Wildcats was really doing a good job of staying with their blocks because there was some real good penetration on the part of the Patriots, and instead of just kind of relaxing their block, they rode them all the way out as that play came through. The Patriots were already out of the picture. Just a good job of, of good su uh, sustained line blocking. Hamlet wide left, Coleman in the slot. On first and 10, the ball actually at the 11 yard line. They give inside, Salzman again, breaks tackles, touchdown Libertyville. That old death now came back and really hurt him right there. We talk about what turnovers do and how they give the other team an opportunity. And I tell you, the Wildcats took it and in just a few short plays, they put it into the end zone. Just, and you know, the amazing thing is, he really went into the end zone. He didn't get touched until after he crossed the goal line stripe. That is surprising because once again, we talked about up the middle, the hole was there. And we've got penalty flags flying on the point after attempt. Art Muchajer will try to tack on the point after. And we've got encroachment on the part of the defense. Mm, now, no. you kick it, now you start thinking, <laughs> and it looks as though the Wildcats are gonna go for two. You're gonna pick up half the distance of the goal line after the penalty. And Randy Kuzieski has decided, hey, let's tack on two more. Oh, I tell you, this is really, really a job now on the part of the offense to make sure they have all 11 out there because you, you come off the field thinking your extra point team is gonna do the job. Guys take off their helmets, they start to disperse on the sidelines. Gotta make sure they've got all 11 out there. They do. Jansen brings them up to the line of scrimmage. Brandon Smythe, again the lone running back, Coleman. Oh, off to the right, another flag. And now a flag comes flying. And we've got a delay of game, so the fact that it took a little time on the part of Libertyville to come up with the offensive play to try to get two more cost them in the long run, and you'll go right back to what you tried before, and that's the extra point. And now you're doing it five yards deeper. Right, you're doing it a little further back. Now the ball at the 15, so 25-yard point after attempt by Mujajir. And, and a kick is up, and it's good. Well, credit the Wildcats with keeping their head in the game and not getting frustrated when they lost that on the penalty. I mean, that was just a good job by them of reacting first to the penalty, getting their extra point team off the field, their offense back out, and then turning around doing a reversal on that. Just a good job. 6.13 left to go in the first quarter, and it's Libertyville 7, Stevenson nothing. On Libertyville's homecoming, the Wildcats. Unable to come up with anything on their opening drive, but then come up with an interception, thanks to Mike Ward. And eventually, a couple of plays later, it's put in the end zone on a 10-yard run by Adam Salzman. Keep in mind our broadcast last week, Chip, when we watched the two teams, 6-0, 6-0, the scouts against the Patriots, we did not see a real strong special team play by either squad. You've got to wonder now, here it is, the wind's at the back, but the sun's in their eyes for the Patriots. Just what's going to happen on this kickoff? A turnover here could really, really 
hurt them big time, and yet good special teams coverage by the Wildcats could really fire them up even more so. Clancy and Brandt this time are back deep for the Patriots. That's right, last week we saw guys unable to grab hold of punts and kickoffs. Fielding cleanly was a chore. And here's the kick. And it's taken by Clancy at his own 13-yard line. Breaks a couple of tackles and oh. gets popped at the 27-yard line. Putting a hat on him was Adam Waugh. So wow. the Patriot offense will come back out. But, you know, after a touchdown and a nice special teams play, a big hit like that, Libertyville pumped up right now. Well, and, and the fire is contagious. You know, they ran. Their, their defense went out onto the field. They didn't jog. They raced out there. They can't wait to get their hands back on there and do something. And it was just a, a heck of a pop by Adam to really put that runner down. And here's Clancy, finds a hole, bursts into the secondary across the 30 to the 32 yard line. Nice piece of running by Steve Clancy as he picks up five. And yet if Clancy doesn't get brought down there, it was open territory after him. He explodes through, he got good line blocking by the left side there, but his explosion through the hole, boy, now you see him, now you don't. Well, you talk about a guy that can wreak some havoc in a secondary. We saw that last week as he danced and weaved his way through the Lake Forest defense for the tune of 160 some yards on the ground. Here he comes again, has to dance in the backfield and gets wrapped up. Excellent coverage by the right side of the Wildcat defense. Steve Crone leading the charge there. Tim Beschel also inside. I say, look who's getting up from the bottom of the pile. Number 32 Beschel just jammed that all the way back. Crone comes in across the top and puts the finishing touch on, but Beschel is the one who stuffed that from the get-go. You consider what Stevenson has in that backfield with the combination of Brandt and Clancy, and there's really not one guy you can focus on. No. But so far, Libertyville has done a nice job in bottling up Clancy. Two carries, five yards. Brandt, nine on two carries. And Brandt went to the left side this time, and he's going to be close to a first down. What a one-man effort because he was hit right at the yard line, the 31, where the snap came from. As he's going downfield, his legs are churning. He's leaning forward. As he went down, he leaned forward. Looks like he came up about a foot, foot and a half short. Yeah, they're not going to bring out the chains on this. The officials came right back and, and gave that indication. It's short by about a foot. And the Patriots are going to go for it as Cervic comes back into the huddle. Remember, between each play, Cervic goes to the sideline to get the play called from the coach. They don't shuttle it in with receivers or running backs. The quarterback comes and goes. Eliminate that middleman. Yep. Just get it right to the guy who's got to call that play. Big play, big play. Fourth and one at the Stevenson 36-yard line. And it's Butler. No. Banged in the backfield. And his second effort may have fallen short. And he does come up short. Well, now we're going to have an official's timeout. They're going to want to measure this one. Adam Butler hit in the backfield, bounced off that tackle, tried to surge forward, but ran into yet another wall. And dependent on the mark, he will either have or not have the first down. That's Libertyville's ball. I'll tell you, the whole right side of that defense really did the job, and we'll get their numbers for you, but that right defensive tackle, that right defensive end are doing a great job of penetration. They stuff up the blockers right away. In comes Waugh, in comes Beschel, and they really put the wood to them. Talk about big, big play by your defense to set up your offense. All the momentum. Happens to be wearing black and orange right now as the Wildcats take over at the 36. Jansen back to throw, wings it to the outside. It's complete. Tom Joush with the reception, steps out of bounds at the 22-yard line. 14-yard pickup. What did we talk about in the pregame, about the ability that Jansen and the staff here felt they could go to the air against the Patriots, and they're doing it and doing it effectively. What that does, too, Chip, remember, that stretches out your defense so much, that sets back up your running game, too. Jansen now, 3 of 5, 37 yards, and he's spreading the wealth. Smythe, Joush, and Salzman all have receptions. 
And Coleman in motion. And he gets the carry. And he fights his way through the middle of the Patriot defense inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Finally making sure he was down 25. Clancy came up from the secondary position, but Coleman had already, already done his job, overstepped a couple of hands and bodies, and got five yards almost. Clock moving now with 3.20 left to go in the first quarter. 7-0 Libertyville. A 10-yard Adam Salzman touchdown run. Put the Wildcats on the board. And Jansen with the quick pitch up front to Coleman. Has Out. a blocker. Touchdown, Libertyville. 19-yard run, Tyler Coleman. Beautifully set up by the pitch from Jansen. And on your camera right now, you look at that crowd out on the side. They're going nuts. The players are going nuts. What a good read. Not only did Jansen wait to the last instant, did that forward pitch like that, really got it right where he had to go. But credit Coleman with the right read. For a minute, I thought he was going to start to go inside, and I wanted to say, no, go out, go out. And he did it and just raced to the corner. 19-yard TD reception off the shovel pass. And Mouchinger tacks on the point after. 3.02 left to go in the first quarter. It's been all Libertyville, 14-0. The Wildcats sending a shock wave through the Stevenson faithful. And yet, look at how they're doing it. Yeah, they've got the lead 14 zip, but their defense has given them the two opportunities. First, the interception, a good return. So they start their offensive series on the, on the Patriots side of the 50-yard line. Then, when it's fourth down and a foot, and they actually drive them back, and they, they shut down the Patriot offense, something these guys aren't used to seeing. Remember, they're the number two offense in the area. They're averaging about 400 yards a game. They're scoring 40 points a game, and right now, they, uh, they are catching their lunch. Well, Libertyville just doing everything that they have to. They're executing. They're coming up with the big plays. You know, earlier this week, Randy Kuzievsky said, we don't have to play a perfect game, but at no point can we turn the ball over or commit stupid penalties. And I kind of thought you'd almost have to. The way Stevenson has looked so far this season, you'd have to come up with a perfect effort. And so far, we're seeing it right now as the Wildcats have just executed perfectly, opening up huge holes for Coleman and giving Jansen the protection necessary to hook up with his receivers. And here's another big special teams play. And Kyle Brandt takes it and gets out to about the 28-yard line. So the Patriot offense will try to answer the 14-0 onslaught that the Wildcats have come up with. Steve Crone stepped in for the special teams unit of Libertyville to make the tackle. You know, it's almost like we're seeing a deja vu of what happened last week when the scouts came in there 6-0. You knew they were a good team. You knew they had a lot going for them offensively and they were just on their heels the whole first half. They weren't ready to play. Everything was going against them. Right now, the Patriots are catching that. You know, they're, they know what it is to be in that position. It is a total role reversal from last week's game, but different jerseys being worn. You know, different jerseys, afternoon game, standing room only crowd, your homecoming. You know, it, it's just different day, different contest. First and 10 from the Patriot 28-yard line. Cervic back to throw to the outside, and it's incomplete. Tried to hook up with his receiver, Steve Struby, but it was not good. Adam Waugh right there to lay the hit into the back of Struby. I really think Struby might have been able to pull that down, except Adam Waugh literally just takes his feet out and lays a good hit to him just at the right instant. There's no way he's going to bring it in because everything underneath him was gone. He had to extend a little bit on that, too. Yeah. He had the inside position, and Cervic just got it up in the air a little too much. And we're going to have a penalty on the part of the Wildcats. Jumping offside and into the neutral zone was number 76 for Libertyville. That's Brian Vaughn. So little, Vaughn, a little too anxious. Yeah. He's seen what's happened so far and wants to be more of a, a, more a part of it. Now, Brown... Brian Vaughn is playing a nose tackle, which means he's oftentimes getting double teamed, sometimes even triple teamed, because the center will get help from either the right or the left guard, sometimes both. So Vaughn really has to get everything he can, every jump off the ball, every little advantage he's got to earn for himself, and that time he was uh, just a step too quick. Well, the Patriots get a five-yard gift, so it's second down and five now. The ball pushed out 
to the Stevenson 33-yard line. And here comes Kyle Brandt bursting through a hole, just running over people in the secondary. He's got the first down, and boy, did he lay the hit on Mike Ward once he got into that backfield. <laughs> Mike Ward got up, kind of shrugged his shoulders, and it wasn't like, gee, I showed him. It's like, what the heck hit me? Because he really got popped. Let's go down to the sideline now for Chris Childers. Okay, we had a little bit of a technical problem there. We got Chris Childers working the sidelines for us, giving us some info from down there. In the second half, we will be joined by yet another of the tag team sideline reporting that we have, Dave Kazukas. A couple of students here at Libertyville High School. Dave, an aspiring journalist, wants to get into some reporting, some television work. Chris Childers as well, as said before, the Eagle Vision program, if you've had a chance to see it on the Jones system, he was hosting the sports segment that they had. Guy wants my job, too. <laughs> Gotta wait. Stand in line. Here comes Kyle Brandt once again. Just pushes the pile back to the 49-yard line. Picked up five on that play. Bottom of the pile was Tim Beschel again, but look at where he ended up. Even as his legs are being taken away from him, those shoulders and that whole upper torso is wiggling for extra yardage every step of the way. Actually give Brandt credit for six yards, and he's a guy, we talked about it, he just keeps coming and keeps coming, pumping the legs. Tremendous running attack by the Stevenson Patriots. They have that year after year. Second down and four. Here's Clancy, and he's not going anywhere. Beautifully read by Steve Crone. Tim Beschel came up with some great work by the right side of the defense for Libertyville. Well, Crone is that right side, outside linebacker, and we talk about the penetration by the line, but when you got a linebacker reading his key, they pulled the guard and he instantly came across the line of scrimmage. They snuffed that before he can even get to the corner. Just an excellent read. Clancy has not seen much daylight at all this afternoon. Three carries, three yards. Third down and five after the loss. Here comes Brandt. And he's going to get out to midfield before he was tripped up by Tim Beschel. And he's going to be short of the first down, and that'll bring up a fourth down. And it appears with the conference going on on the far side of the field right now that the Patriots are taking a look to see how far it is, whether they're going to, and they're going for it. He sends Cervic back in. Remember last week when they went back to punt deep in their own territory against Lake Forest, they had problems with the snap, and the scouts took over at the five-yard line of Stevenson. Perhaps Bill Mitz feels that this offense has got to get a, a kick in the rear and getting a first down. Here would be it. Both sides are up. Fourth down and two. Here comes Brent, and he's going to have that first down into Wildcat territory at the 46-yard line. Tell you, just well executed by the offensive line. They seem to have a little bit more success when they go to their right. They're getting some good blocking out of their right tackle and their right guard versus when they go to the left, the Patriots just aren't able to get it done. Under half a minute left to go in the first quarter. 14-0 Libertyville, if you're just joining us. Libertyville homecoming, and the fans here have had a lot to cheer about. They're glad they came home. The alumni are thrilled to be here for this one. Cervic back to throw, lofts it to the outside, and it's incomplete. Overshot his intended receiver on the far side, Steve Strubin. There's a good example of what you oftentimes see happen in high school ball. Not a real well-run pattern by the receiver. He went out. It's like a down and out, but it was a down and kind of drift. Your quarterback really doesn't know exactly where he's going to run that ball. He's got to run a crisp pattern so he knows where to throw it. Cervic out of the gates now, 0 for 3 with an interception. That pick led to the earlier touchdown. And they keep it on the ground. Kyle Brandt to the right side, and he's not going to get much. Matt Hansen steps up from cornerback to bring him down, and that's going to do it for the first quarter. Kyle Brandt picks up three on the play. And that's one quarter of play in the books from Libertyville High School. The host Wildcats in front of their homecoming crowd put up 14 early points 
and lead it 14 zip. If you're the unmarried father of a child in Illinois, you can protect your rights as a father and make sure your child is not adopted without your knowledge. In Illinois, a father is supposed to be notified and consulted before his child can be adopted. But an unmarried father may be hard to find or might not be legally recognized as the father. The Illinois Putative Father Registry is a way for an unmarried father to make sure he receives notice of any possible adoption and protect his rights as a father. Back at Libertyville High School, the Wildcats jump out to a 14-0 lead and hold it through the first quarter as we get ready to start quarter number two. Defense coming back out for Libertyville as Stevenson is facing a third down and seven. Why don't we go back to the sidelines with Chris Childers. The second was 36 yards attack of both rush and pass. Back to you guys back in the booth. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Getting ready to start the second quarter of play. And the Stevenson Patriots have had their backs to the wall throughout that first quarter. They couldn't get much accomplished on the ground. Kyle Brandt, their only successful running back, eight carries for 33 yards. Steve Clancy held in check, three for three yards. And Anna Butler, one carry for two. So the Wildcats doing a fine job of shutting down the Patriot running game. Well, and they're also taking away the uh, passing attack, too. And Cervic fires it to the outside, and it's complete as he hooks up with Jurassic. And they're going to be short again of a first down. That's Cervic's first completion of the ball game. Good enough for six yards, but again, they're short of the first down. It'll bring up fourth and one. Watch that one again and again. I think you may find out it actually was trapped. The trajectory of the ball was just so low. The only way that's not trapped is if he has his elbow underneath him. And I don't, the referees couldn't tell it either, so they gave him the benefit of the doubt. Fourth and one now, the ball at the Libertyville 33. Here's Clancy to the outside, and he's gonna have that first down to the 34-yard line. Picked up three, and a fine piece of running by Steve Clancy, who, as I said before, has just been shut down this afternoon with nowhere to go. We talked a little bit earlier about they were able to have a little more success going to their right. Now I see why. Number 76, Joshua Kilker, six foot, 273 pounds, tackled. They pulled him, and he literally wiped out two guys with his lead block, and that got him the first down. Cervic back to throw to the outside, incomplete. Just a little too tall for Mike Jurassic. And Cervic, again, coming up with nothing but turf on the throw. He's just one of five now for six yards, which he just got a little bit ago. But you know, Chip, I think it's the coverage. Ward is literally with that receiver stride for stride. They both went up for the ball simultaneously. If he's going to bring it down, it's going to take a superhuman one-handed effort because Ward is just covering him like a paint. Like a what? Like a coat of paint. Oh, a coat of paint. I thought you said pain. Paint. Oh. Well, he's a pain to him he's right now. He's got a lot of pain, yeah. Here's Kyle Brandt to the right side. Just fights wow. off tacklers and gets to the 30-yard line. That was a struggle to pick up four. Adam Waugh finally is there to bring him down, but Kyle Brandt, wow. you know, that's the type of guy that you have in your dreams when you go to bed that night, if you've had to tackle him. Well, and you look at that play, shouldn't have gone anywhere. The, the whole Wildcat line was through there. The linebacker came through. There was nothing but a big mass of humanity. Brant cuts it upfield, and as he's going down, he falls for four and a half, almost five yards again. Third down and six now. And they give us to Brant, and he stopped in the backfield. Tim Beschel able to wrap him up, but the first guy to grab hold of him was Steve Crone. No, at least stop him a little bit in the backfield. What happened, Chip? Steve Crone took on the blocker, drove him back, and as Brandt goes out, he bumped into him, kicked him outside a little bit. Well, they're on the short side of the field. The linebackers, the rest of the core for the Wildcats were there. But Crone took that blocker on single-handedly, drove him into the running back. Unreal effort by Crone. Special's gonna get credit for that tackle, but boy, Crone. With the assist. Yes, <laughs> just made the play. Fourth and nine now, the ball pushed back to the 33 yard line, and the Patriots will go for it again. But we're gonna wait as flags go flying. And we'll check and see what the infraction is here. Offside procedure. The illegal procedure on the part of the Patriots, and we're gonna push this back five more. 
Now I think we're going to see the punting team because it brings up fourth and about 13, almost 14. You know, the Patriots just are, they're not out of the blocks at all offensively. And the Patriots will kick it away. John Riley drops back to punt. He stands at his own 49-yard line. And it's a high kick, and a fair catch is being called for at the 10-yard line. And the Wildcats will come out. They've got a 14-0 lead, 9-19 left to go here in the first half. Gutsy call by the receiver down there, number 20, Hanson, I believe it was. He's looking straight into the sun. He's on the 10-yard line. It's one of those, do I take it, do I not take it? And yet, because the bullet men for the Patriots were down there, he's got to take it. Just a real gut call, because <laughs> if he drops it, the Patriots are right there to pick up any fumble. And first and 10 now for the Wildcats. And here's Tyler Coleman with blockers out in front, and he bursts out for a nine-yard pickup. That was a student body right, and they pulled a guard. They had a lead back going through. From our perspective, we watched that hole open up like the big C's parting, and Coleman just ran hard. I'm gonna get back to that. I thought rule of thumb is don't touch it inside the tent. Well, you do, but like I said, the Patriots had their bullet men down there, and the wind is blowing at his back. That could hold it up just a little bit. That was a tough call. Here's Coleman speaking of calls. They call his number again, and he's got the first down out to the 33 yard line. Excellent blocking again, and a number that we're probably not going to have the time to call because there's so many other things happening so much. Number 73 for the Wildcats came through there. Seth Luxon did an excellent job of sealing off. The linebacker for the Patriots is coming over with licking his chops like, boy, I'm going to lay the wood to him. Seth just took him out in one blow and got another five yards. I got to correct that. I said the 33 is at the 27, a pickup of eight on that play. And Coleman really getting into stride now. That's him in motion. And this time, Jansen drops back to throw under some pressure, and he's going to be oh. sacked. And a flag comes flying. The pressure came from up front by Ray Shea Hill, and he dropped Johnson, or Jansen excuse me, for a big loss. But we'll see the penalty. It's a face mask against Stevenson. And that'll be a 15-yarder. And here's another thing. You know, if you're writing the script on the Patriots sideline, you're saying, well, offensively, we can't do this. And defensively, we're not doing so well. Now we get the quarterback. We have good coverage downfield. We're ready to sack him. And we grab a face mask. It totally negates what was an outstanding play by Hill. Hill, 6'5", 248-pound senior. Got in Jansen's face. Jansen's 6'185 pound senior. Instead of being about a 10 or 12 yard loss, it's now first and because they get the down over again, second and 25, it's now first and about six. And Coleman in motion. Here he comes with the ball again. And he gets across the 35 to the 36 yard line before he's brought down on the play. Joshua Weisberg stepped in and laid the pads to Coleman. So it's gonna bring up a second down and two. I'll tell you, this is almost textbook football right now on the part of the Wildcats. Here they let the defensive end come in, number 90, Brian Novosel, comes in there doing his job. Along comes number 35, Brandon Smythe, just lays a good kick out block and opens the hole. They've been coming to their right side and getting those blocks and they're creating, they're sealing off the tacklers and just opening up a hole the ground in a gigantic hole this time for Smythe across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Maybe a little reward for Smythe for doing such a good job when they went right, doing that, kicking out that defensive end. Let's say, let's give him the, carry, the carrot and let him take it to the left. Wow. And the Wildcats taking time off the clock. Seven minutes left to go here in the second quarter. And Brian Hamlet goes wide to the left side this time. And Coleman comes in motion. Jansen back to throw under heavy pressure. Almost got away from it. Kyle Brandt and Ray Shea Hill able to grab hold of him back at the 40-yard line. But he dove up to the 42. So it comes down as a four-yard loss on the play. 
I'll tell you, if he would have gotten away from that, been able to get an arm down and keep his balance, you got to believe Coach Bill Mitz and his crew on the side would have just wondered, is there divine intervention? Because they have him sacked, they spin him around, they're throwing him to the ground, and as you said, he almost got away. Seems that the downfield coverage is there for Stevenson and Hill, and that time you had a sack again, so they're getting into Jansen's face. The guy's downfield doing the job. Second and 14, Jansen fires it to the outside, incomplete. John Riley of Stevenson, really the closest guy to that one. Well, they had double coverage on the out man, and you gotta wonder if Jansen maybe isn't forcing the ball. Remember, we talked about how Chris Fulbright, the two-time All-Lake County quarterback, and he did such a good job for a couple seasons here, and he was able to look one way, check off receivers, and just kind of fool the defensive backs because he wouldn't lock on his receiver. Jansen seems to lock on the guy right away and then maybe force the ball a little bit when he shouldn't. Third down and 14 now for the Wildcats, and an official's timeout. Oh, check that. The Libertyville Wildcats burn a timeout here. 6.07 left to go in the second quarter. It's 14-0 Libertyville. And while we have this chance, our congratulations go out to Emily Bohr, who was named the homecoming queen here at Libertyville High School. So congratulations, Emily. You know, we were looking around the field and had a chance to talk to uh, Don Johnson earlier, who is in charge of the media services department here, the guy that's overseeing the Libertyville High School students who are involved in the television club and things like that. And we greatly appreciate his efforts as well as all the kids helping out this afternoon. But he and I were just sitting around talking before the game. The goalposts on each side of the field are orange and black and our professional goalposts. They were purchased from Ohio and brought out this year. Brand new goalposts. There you see it in the shot. Orange uprights and the black base with the Wildcat. They were brought in from uh, Ohio. And look what you see in that shot when we, and I'm sure we'll have it again. When you look around the parameters of this field around the fence, it's literally a standing room only crowd. There you get it. There's hardly, in fact, they had to ask all the people in the stands to scoot their cheeks over a little bit so that the band could get up in here. It's just, what an outstanding afternoon. And you, you tried to con your way into getting a closer parking spot too. I know it. I had to take the Metro in again. <laughs> Third and 13 now for the Wildcats, and Jansen rolls out. Across the middle, it's complete. Tyler Coleman with the reception, but he's gonna be short of the first down. Much better blocking right there. He kept it back in, and as the pressure, which was getting to him again, that running back who stayed in, his blocking back, kicked him out. Bought Jansen a little more time, and they came up just a yard short. Good job by the Patriots secondary. When they did let that reception go through, they didn't let the receiver go downfield because he was right on the 45-yard line. Could have fallen for the first down. And the Wildcats will kick it away now. And it's a high punt by Brian Hamlet. Fair catch is called for by Jurassic, and he takes it at the Patriot 23-yard line. 5.23 left to go. I got to believe that one of the scouts or the coaches up here in the box is going to be talking to the sideline saying, look at what happened on that punt. They only rushed three people. They could have run for that. And I, I think somewhere down the road, that could come to be a big play because the Patriots did not put any pressure, didn't even have any containment. They just kind of ignored it and said, well, we're sure he's going to block. And we saw the fake punt last week as well. Yeah. We saw a lot last week when you get down to it. Well, when you got Plenty six, of action. when you got six and zero oh against six and zero, oh, you can't just do the old three yards in a cloud of dust. You've really got to get resourceful. And the Patriots go right side with Adam Butler. He's brought down by a host of Libertyville Wildcats after. He picks up five on the play. You talk about resourceful when you have a Brandt and a Clancy and a Butler in the backfield. That's three outstanding resources. You know, you can just mix it up. You can use them as decoys. Just uh, what an outstanding backfield to have to call upon. Conversely, what a great effort today, however, oh, yeah. by the defense of Libertyville. It shut down that run again. Second down and five. And here's Kyle Brandt to the 33-yard line. He's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. 
And Brand unofficially 37 yards on 11 carries, certainly well below his average. Remember, we talked last week between he and Clancy, those two guys were averaging around 9 to 10 yards a carry, yeah. and they're well below it this afternoon. Well, and, and I'm thinking of that play right there. That was designed to go over center or over the right guard. You know, he runs up there, it's shut down. How many backs could turn around, change direction, kick it outside, and it looks like he got the first down or he's going to be right at the... they got to get down that close to look at it. Well, he's just short of that first down. And it'll be third down now for the Patriots. They have faced several fourth down and short situations this afternoon. So they've been getting close to first down yardage. But unable but to convert. But yeah, just been able, unable to convert and haven't been able to do much. They've been stopped a couple of times. A turnover early cost them. So the Patriots looking to try to get something established and get some points on the board in this one. It's been all Libertyville since the opening gun. Yeah, I think we're going to see some blitz come here. Beschel's just edging on the line. And here comes Clancy. And he's going to have that first down out to the 35-yard line. As a gain, a short one. But effective nonetheless because it does move the chains. Well, and with 4.30 to go in the second quarter here, you know, if the Patriots are going to do anything, they we know they can strike quickly, but today they haven't been able to do anything really of any substance. So if they're going to put a drive together, now's the time to do it. First and 10 now, the Patriots at their own 35-yard line. Here's Cervic back to throw. And oh. the hook and ladder, Jurassic to Clancy. And they did this last week, and it was just as effective. Down to the Wildcat 34-yard line. But I tell you, credit the secondary with the Wildcats rather than try to go for them right away. Three of them took a good angle of pursuit. When you saw them have to slow down, it was the pursuit man coming from behind. They did have it well contained, but boy, they execute that well. So really about a seven-yard pass out to Jurassic, and it becomes a 31-yard pickup. They did that same exact play last week against Lake Forest, and it, it proved out to be the same today. And this time, Kyle Brandt gets driven out of bounds around the 31-yard line. Boy, that hook and ladder is just a beautiful play when worked as well as it is by the Stevenson Patriots. You just drill Jurassic with a quick slant pattern. Everyone converges on him, and Clancy just slopes in from the backside and takes off. Well, and it's amazing how open he is. You know, the receiver for that initial seven-yard pass, well covered, you know, just a shirt put, boom, pass like that. But then that trail man coming through is wide open. If they don't throw the short pass and they throw a little flare to Clancy, he's wide open too. Second down and seven. And they give it to the first man through, going into the middle, and that play goes absolutely nowhere. Tim Beschel, once again, steps in and makes the big hit. Really laid the wood to him, too. It wasn't a question that, gee, he went down. He went down with a boom. Start to hear the band marching in front of us. They're getting ready for halftime with three minutes to go, and third and long for the Patriots. It's, it's time to put out or walk away here in the first half. And stick around at halftime. A nice interview with one of the school officials here coming up as Butler breaks a couple of tackles, has the first down, and is dropped at the 23-yard line. Chuck Veach will be our halftime interview. Outstanding sweep to the right by the Patriots. For a minute, it looked like it's going to be shut down. Number three, Crone is in there. Adam Waugh's in there. And still, that back is downfield, another five to six yards. And the Patriots get that first down again. 2.47 left to go. Down 14-0. The Pats looking to strike here. And here's Brand, and he gets to the 20, and that's about it. So got two on that play. Mentioned at halftime coming up, Chuck Veach will be the person being interviewed, the interviewee, Dave Kazukas. You get a chance to see him, one of the students from Libertyville High School. We'll conduct an interview with him, talk about the homecoming festivities, student council here, and immense student council it is. And you'll get a chance to see that coming up at halftime. Official timeout for an equipment repair. 
If you're the Patriots, I tell you, this gives you an ideal time to collect your thoughts and get you. It's like a freebie. And yet for the Wildcats, it's also a time for them to make sure that they've got their defensive assignments covered. I believe that was Sean Coughlin who came off the field because of the uh, equipment problem. 6'1", 261-pound guard. Second and eight. Here's Clancy. And he runs into a pile at about the 17-yard line. So he picked up four. And it's going to bring up a third down. And that brings out a timeout on the part of the Patriots because with exactly two minutes to go or third and long, you know, they've got to make some things happen. They've been doing a drive. They've been getting done what they've needed to to get the ball downfield. But, you know, they've got to make it happen here. Are they going at halftime with a goose egg? I've got to believe that's something we haven't seen out of them all season long. With them averaging 40 points a game, they are not accustomed to being in this predicament. No, certainly not at all. This is a club that, you know, for as much as we've said they haven't been able to get anything accomplished, you have to give a lot of that credit to Libertyville and what they've done defensively, too. They have been able to shut off the run and not allow Clancy to dance free into the secondary and try to make things happen. And you really got to credit that secondary for filling the gaps in the defensive line for doing a job. But, boy, it's been a total team effort this afternoon. When we're looking at guys like Waugh and Crone coming up from the corner to stuff out plays. And Crone's big hit earlier that yeah. allowed Beschel to get a tackle for a loss. Just a huge play. Well, and I think, it's as you said, it's a total team effort. They're getting the penetration, and yet when they get the penetration and Clancy or Brandt get behind it, the linebackers are there, and sometimes those guys are taken out of it. And then the secondary, that last play, you saw Clancy was hit, and like you were holding your breath saying, okay, he's going to slide off that and go outside, but he couldn't because Beschel and two more guys came from the backside. Just their, their pursuit is tremendous. You talk about watching Stevenson perhaps not get anything out of this first half. Well, they came into today's game scoring 273 points while allowing 93. Libertyville has scored 200 to this point and given up just 80. Well matched. Very well matched squad. Each team giving up around 10 points a game, maybe a little more, but Stevenson has given up more than their average this afternoon, down 14-0. Here comes Kyle Brandt on a third down and four. Cuts it back in. He's going to have that first down as he's dropped at the nine-yard line. Or, excuse me, dropped down yeah, just inside the 10 to the nine-yard line. Coach Mitz has Zervik runs over to the sideline, and they had a play already pre-called, and he just, you know, nodded his head and, like, that's one we want to go, because with 150 to go, the Patriots realize they cannot waste any time here. Need some momentum coming up here. Try to get into the locker room with a score. Three-man backfield. Here's Kyle Brandt to the outside, and that play is not going to go anywhere thanks to the effort by Steve Crone, who again steps in and makes a tackle. And yet he gets a hold and he trips him up, but if the secondary doesn't come up to put the finishing touch on there, you got to believe, as the Patriots take their second time out here, you got to believe that they're going to end up going into the end zone. These runners on the part of the Patriots just do not go down, and, and yet Crone made an outstanding play. Getting some support from the backside, wow. too. The linebackers have been right there, but we've seen some good tackling today. I mean, let's face it, this is a simple game of blocking and tackling, and we're seeing it executed to perfection this afternoon with Libertyville getting what they can on the ground this afternoon, but defensively making the tackles. Sure, Brandt's been pumping those legs and churning out some yards, but when you really get down to it, you know, they've been making the tackles when they had to. Clancy's got 36 yards on seven carries. Most of that coming off the pitch, however, on the hook and ladder. 24, actually, in that neighborhood. Kyle Brandt, 57 yards on 17 carries. So, although the Patriots are closing in on 100 yards rushing again, for the most part, it's been held in check, and they haven't been able to get well, much done. And you look at they haven't done anything through the air, so I'm just trying to look over your notes here. You take out that one play, they have about 70 yards total offense for the first half, something that they just are not used to. You know, remember, they're averaging almost 400 yards a game offensively, and this Wildcat defense has just done a tremendous job of taking everything away they've thrown at them. Through the air, Cervic 2 of 6 for 13 yards and an interception. Here he is back to throw once again, rolls out to his left. Good coverage in the end zone, steps up and gets taken down at the six yard line. 
fine coverage downfield in the end zone. And that allowed Jeff Horvat to step in and keep Cervic to a short gain. And we've got the last and final timeout by the Patriots with 1.13 to go. Third down there on about the seven yard line. I tell you, we're getting, uh, <laughs> what a day for football. You see it in the background, the colors, the sky blue. I mean, it's 60 degrees. This is unbelievable. You know, you take a look at that last play, and there was some great coverage in the in the end zone. More black jerseys surrounding the Stevenson receivers. About two guys in the pattern, six guys in the defensive secondary oh, yeah. covering it. And you are not going to get too many completions with a situation like that. Well, and we talk about it's a simple game of blocking and tackling, but it's also a simple game of running and running hard as they're doing it and it's just it's simple but man it's just plain execution and as well as the Patriots are trying to execute and they're slowly you feel like they're starting to get on track the Wildcats are doing their good solid consistent job defensively and they're not giving anything up and right now this is two plays third and long from about the seven or eight yard line Wildcats hold here they send the Patriots in with a goose egg or they hold on this play you make them try to kick a minute 13 left to go in the first half. Right now, 14-0 Libertyville. Adam Salzman scored on a 10-yard touchdown run in the first quarter, and that was backed up by a Tyler Coleman 19-yard touchdown catch. And Cervic rolls out to his right. He's got some running room, steps back in. Touchdown, Stevenson. Adam Cervic with a heads-up run gets into the end zone and the Patriots are on the scoreboard. I tell you, I really thought Cervic was gonna be nailed in the backfield. Number three, Steve Crone came in there and yet he had an outstanding blocker, number 78 for the uh, Patriots. Sean Coughlin did a, just a tremendous job of staying with his block. It was borderline. I thought they were almost gonna get a hold out of him, but Coughlin, as he got his body in front of him, and at his size, what'd we say, 6'1", 261, that's a big body. Cervic cut behind the block and put it in the end zone. It was just a good job by the blocker. And the Pats are gonna go for two now. And Cervic gives it to Kyle Brandt, and he did not get there. So just as Stevenson gets on the board with a touchdown to get momentum, the crowd for Libertyville gets fired to back up again because they stop him on the two-point conversion, and it's 14-6 Libertyville. And yet you watch the two squads. Here the Patriots are going over to the sideline. They just scored. They should be elated. They finally did something, and they're kind of walking like you think they just got beat, 30 to zip. There's no emotion, no excitement. The Wildcats coming over here, remember, they gave up the touchdown, but they stopped him on the extra point. I mean, Coach Randy's out on the field like a teenager jumping up and down. His assistants are behind him. The kids come over fired up. Yeah, we bent, we broke a little bit, but we came back and put them right back on their heels. That's a big play there, too, because as this game goes on, you know, you're going to need to get those points back somehow. Eight-point game right now. You know, you go into the halftime locker room and the, and the psychology is going to be tremendous right now. What the coaches and the players go in and what they come out with. Because I said the Patriots, they should be ecstatic on the other side and there's no emotion at all. And these Wildcats are fired up. They're going to go in there and say, okay, so we gave them one. A team that's scoring 40 points a game, we gave them six. We're still controlling the game. We're dominating the field. We're ahead on the scoreboard. And when they tried to take two from us to maybe get an advantage back, we stuck them back on their tush. Wow. Perhaps in a little more colorful language, you think? I, I remember this a family show, so I didn't say any more. And now the Stevenson Patriots will kick it back off with Riley once again. Coleman and Hamlet back deep for Libertyville, but this is a very short kick. And it's taken at the 25-yard line by Seth Luxon. Not a, a usual customary position for him to be running back kickoffs in a no. big game, but he still did it. You know, you get those big linemen, they want to get those hands on the football sometimes. Although, kickoffs, you're like, hey, look around, let me get rid of this football. I shouldn't be handling this. Well, and, and let's look at where we're at right now. We're exactly one minute to go, and we know the passing attack of the Wildcats is there. 
and they're coming out of the shotgun formation. Trips to the right, slot man to the left. You know, they can make something happen. Hamlet, Johnson, Salzman, wide right as a flag goes flying immediately and the pass is incomplete. What we're gonna have is they did not have seven men on the line of scrimmage and you see on the forefront there, the coaches are waving to that player. You gotta be up on the line of scrimmage. They only had six men. Boy, you think with a minute left, you're up by eight, that perhaps you might be a little bit more conservative. You're running the football well. Perhaps try to run this clock out. Stevenson using timeouts on that last drive to put up a touchdown, but Libertyville will have none of that. They come out with those three, three wide receivers, shotgun formation. Let's try to tack on six more if we can. Well, remember, who's got the momentum? Who's got the emotion right now? These guys think they can do anything, and they, for the most part, have been. Sure, they lost five yards, but with the incomplete pass, the clock is still stopped. You know, so they wasted a down with it, but they can come back out again. So they do push it back five to the 25-yard line now. First and, ten, first and 15, I should say. And a more conventional setup now for the Wildcats. And Coleman's in motion, and he gets the carry. Comes to the outside, gets Good a nice stiff arm. stiff arm, and gets taken out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Nothing wrong with that. They picked up about seven yards, maybe even a little bit more than that. They got out of bounds. You know, they still have 48 seconds to go. And if they need to, and we know they have a kicking game, the wind is at the back of the Wildcats. The sun's in their eyes, but the wind is at their back, and it's blowing directly from their backs down the field. Coleman got out of bounds with 48 seconds left to go after a nice pickup on the play. 10 yards they give him credit for. And Salzman this time with it. And he's gonna have that first down. Okay. Has blockers out in front, cuts it back into Patriot territory at the 47 yard line. 18 yard run by Adam Salzman. And the Wildcats very wisely, they didn't waste a timeout. They get their play in because the clock is stopped for the first down. The chain crew taking their time. Maybe that's the home field advantage getting down there, but they had to fight through the crowd of the players on the other side. They only wasted five seconds. Start the clock back up. Three wide receivers to the right side out of the shotgun. Jansen wings it to the outside, incomplete, looking for Joush that time. Just a little too far out, stops the clock with 24 seconds left. Remember, that's a dangerous pass, too. You gotta believe that the Patriots are thinking they're gonna go to the wideouts, they're gonna go in the flat. You throw that out there and it hangs a long time, and one of those Patriot defensive backs come in, and we know they got quickness back there. That's nothing but end zone in front of them. How about that out and up? I tell you, I think it's worth the risk because the Patriots are overloading to the outside. They're, they're leaving center field in the middle of the field wide open and a, and a down, out, and down. It's going to be there. 24 seconds left to go. Here he is out of the shotgun, that Jansen, and it's picked off. Tried the center screen, and it just good pressure on the part of Jansen, and he threw kind of a wounded duck. Mike Corcoran comes up with the interception. If he keeps his feet, we got a brand new ball game. Well, and we've got a flag somewhere on the field, I've got to believe, because the officials are talking. They're picking up the flag. They're saying there was no flag. And I think what they were looking for, the ball, number one, did not cross the line of scrimmage. So there can't be any, any type of interference. There can't be any obstruction penalty there at all. Brian Hamlet came back underneath the defensive pressure for the screen pass but Jansen just lofted it over his head and Mike Corcoran was right there to catch it. He brings it back out to midfield and there are 17 seconds left now for the Patriots to try to get something again. And they're gonna have a flag as the pass by Cervic is incomplete. He was looking for Jurassic and it was Jurassic who jumped offside and they're gonna bring this one back. Well, the inside scoop on that play that the Wildcats tried to do, they call it a rocket screen after Rocket Ismail, and they tried to throw it there, but Jansen, like I said, not only did he have pressure on him, he was throwing as he was going backwards, and he kind of threw a duck up there that just got picked off, and, and now the Patriots trying to send a bullet man down the field so quickly, he, wanted, he was too eager to get going, he took off before the snap. Yeah, Jansen released that one a little too early, that's where you're gonna get that that flight on the ball like he had, and that killed him. And what it does, they just used up about six or seven seconds on the clock for that play that did him no good other than take him five yards back. 
12 seconds left now to go with the ball at the Patriot 45 yard line. They'll try it again. Jurassic wide left this time. And Cervic back to throw under some pressure. Just bails out by throwing it incomplete. And now a flag yeah. comes flying. We're going to have grounding. Oh, I tell you, they're the closest, other than the people on the sideline, the closest player for the Patriots was at least 15 to 20 yards downfield. Cervic was getting pressured from the backside and just unloaded the ball once the pocket closed in on him. And they do come up with the intentional grounding call and this will push it back even further so the patriots were able to stop a libertyville drive with the interception but have just shot themselves in the foot with two penalties right now which push it all the way back to their own 35. but you know even the penalties really it's not like they took away an outstanding play there wasn't a 30-yard completion downfield or an outstanding run we had a bullet that went way out of bounds and and we had an uh, intentional grounding there they still are not doing anything offensively they've had the one drive which was a slow grind them out but now with six seconds to go they got to put it in the end zone Cervic back to throw and he's just launching it downfield up in the air. And it's batted down by the Wildcat defense. Number 42, Adam Waugh came in there for the tipping drill and he just slammed it to the ground. And that ends it on a goose egg for them. The Libertyville Wildcats come up with 14 first quarter points and carry that lead late into the second when Stevenson answers on a six yard cervic touchdown run. But that is all the Patriots can come up with. Through one half of play here at Libertyville High School. It's the Wildcats 14 and the Patriots 6. Stick around, everyone. We're going to have a nice halftime interview for you coming up regarding the Libertyville Student Council as well as some of the homecoming activities here. We invite you to stay tuned for that, and we'll be back then with second, second half action. 14-6, our score, Libertyville on top. Chris Childers doing our sideline reporting today, checking out the stats, trying to get hold of some people for some information. Doing a great job. Again, a couple of the high school students here along in the television department, as well as a lot of the kids helping out with the staff today with our production. Down in the production booth, working out with the cameras. The kids doing a great job. We're pleased to have this as a Jones Intercable and LHS TV co-production. Getting ready now to kick off the second half. Libertyville on top, 14 to six. The Wildcats will kick it away to the Patriots. Kyle Brandt, Steve Clancy drop back deep for the Patriots to receive the kickoff. Art Mutiger gets his foot into it, and this is going to be Kyle Brandt at his 12-yard line. With a wall of blockers and a nice return out to the 32, and a flag goes flying into the pile. A 20-yard return, and we may get a few more attack down to that. I, if they're going to call this a late hit, let's take our first chastise to the official. That was not late, and that ball player was already down, and he actually tried to cushion it. Oh, they're calling a face mask. Okay, okay, we'll give you your credit back, guys, because they've done an outstanding job of controlling the game here. As he went down in the tackle, there had to be a face mask pulled in there. Good they've, call. Actually, these guys have done a good job. Remember early on in the ball game after the Ward interception, we had a little penalty thrown on the Libertyville sideline because of a... Uh, a little bit of a fracas breaking out. The officials hopping right in. Personal fouls administered. I mean, you get a game like this, boy. Everybody's pumped up from the teams. The officials have to be ready. Certainly the fans are. Well, the emotions run high in a game like this because nobody wants to give an inch. And, and it's really going to be crucial to see what happens here in the second half. And here's Steve Clancy speaking of inches. That's really what he's been limited to this afternoon. Not much has been there for Steve Clancy. He picks up about a yard on that play. But the Libertyville defense seems to have been keying on him more so than Brant this afternoon, and it shows in the statistics that you heard earlier. Well, and look at where they went. The first play from the left, they went to their offensive left. Remember we said in the first half they got their yardage when they went to the right, so maybe they're going to try and force it and, and establish something in the left here. Second down and nine now after the one-yard pickup, and here comes Clancy left side. He's got some blockers in front turns the corner and he picks up about three yards before he's run out of bounds on the play, making the stop Jeff Horvath. They had at least three blockers out in front of him. They pulled number 78, the big tackle, uh, Coughlin again. I mean, that kid can move. Plus they had a, the uh, man they sent in motion came back and did a seal off block and it looked like he was really gonna go somewhere and credit the Wildcats for good pursuit, made only a short yardage out of it. 
Third down and four now. The ball inside Wildcat territory at the 49-yard line. And here comes Kyle Brandt. And he just keeps pushing his way for the first down. Nice job by Kyle Brandt. And they'll move the chains. Wow. I mean, he was really pummeled in at about the 45 to 46-yard line. And you think he's not going to go anywhere because there were two people just hanging on to him. And he took a heck of a hit. And yet you see where the ball rests on the 44 inside almost to the 43. He got all that just going down. First and 10, a big drive for the Patriots to open up the second half here. Down 14-6. Here comes Kyle Brandt, and he runs into a wall named Tim Beschel, but then somehow surges forward close to the 30 yard or close to the 40-yard line. So what looked like a no gain turned into about a yard, yard and a half pickup. And yet still, we're used to seeing these backs pick up this yardage in big eight, nine, and ten yard chunks. We talk of their offensive average per play almost being double digits, and they're barely getting a yard, two yards, then they'll burst for five, then it's back to one. Credit the Wildcats with, with bending, but really doing a good job defensively today. Brian Vaughn comes off the field for the Libertyville Wildcats, a defensive tackle, slightly shaken up as the Patriots keep it on the ground. This time, Joseph Marth, the ball carrier, his first rush of the afternoon, and he picks up a few. That's going to bring up a third down and five now. A new name to enter on your stat sheet. We hadn't heard from him all afternoon, and all of a sudden he comes in. And we've got a third down and five coming up. Big play for the Libertyville defense here, a stand, and it'll bring up a fourth if they can keep Stevenson for picking up any yardage, a fourth and long. Notice the Patriots are in that full house backfield. They've been moving the ball well. Here comes Brandt, and again, he's close to another first down. Gets into that secondary, and I believe he's gonna have it. And he does, they're moving the chains. Brandt with a five yard pickup. Let's send it on down to John Kazukis for a quick interview. Thanks, Chip and Jerry. I'm joined now by Don Shoup, who's director of the LHS band. And Mr. Shoup, what happened to your push-ups from last year? Push-ups? Uh, we're a little out of training. We're going to start practice. We're going to brush up. Maybe later today, after we score the next touch touchdown, Sundell and I will get out there and show them what real push-ups look like. All right, thanks a lot, Mr. Shoup. Anytime. Back up to you, Jerry and Chip. Thanks a lot, John. A little break in the action, and officials time out, getting the chain set. And now everything is back in order. And with the house set, we've got a first and 10 at the Libertyville 32-yard line. Opening drive for the Patriots of the third quarter. Down 14-6. They're trying to answer. And they've got some momentum now. Marth again, the ball carrier, out to about the 26-yard line. Interesting use of this new back in there, Marth, in the backfield. Maybe they feel that they can use the other guys as a decoy, you know, bring this guy in that we really, last week I don't think we saw him at all, or if it was late in the contest, now we're into the second half before he finally enters into the game. Maybe they feel Clancy and Brandt are the kind that are going to go left or go right and become the decoy backs for a change. Second down and five. Here comes Kyle Brandt. And Tim Beschel laid the pads into him, but Brandt was able to dive forward for about three yards. Talk about Joseph Marth, a 5'8", 160-pound junior who stepped into that backfield and has actually come up with some pretty nice runs so far. A five-yarder, a three-yarder, so two carries for eight yards. As you get a look at Tim Beschel, the defensive captain. He got up a little bit slow there, Chip. He was on one knee on the sidelines. I think he just threw a heck of a hit, and he took the worst from the collision. Third down and one for the Patriots. This drive continues. And that time, Adam Butler, the ball carrier, and I don't think he's going to get the first down. Justin Trudelar steps in and makes contact. And they're going to keep Butler from a first down. Well, now we've got an official's timeout. They're going to want to measure this one. And how many of these have we seen today where the, the Patriots get so close and in the first half they kept getting turned back. Now we're going to get a measurement here which will put it uh, you know, right inside the 21 yard line if it's good enough. He did get the momentum enough for the first down. So Adam Butler with just his third carry of the afternoon picks up a big first down. And this possession by the Patriots has chewed up plenty of time on the clock. We're down to seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. 
And they're making a lot of headway now as they're at the Libertyville 21-yard line. A fine drive put together by the Patriots. And, you know, the Wildcats, I really feel, have got to do something big. They've got to get their emotion level back up. They're right now, both teams are playing kind of just going through the motions. Here comes Kyle Brandt. And look at him just burst through a hole and get across the 15 to the 14-yard line. Seven yards by Brandt that time. And the workhorse now with 77 yards on 22 carries. You almost got to feel like the emotion levels right now are on the side of the Patriots. They seem to have just a little bit more zip in their step. And, and the Wildcats, who so dominated the first half, are right now they're waiting for things to happen instead of making them happen. During halftime, I ran into athletic director Tim Albers of Libertyville High School, and he said, you know, I remember a couple years ago, same scenario, we had the lead. I'm a little worried right now because they came back and won the game, the Patriots did. And they're looking real good right now as Clancy gets down near the 10-yard line, close to yet another first down. This is Stevenson Patriot football. This is what we've come to know and we saw last week. In the first half, we did not get any of this type of explosiveness off the line. When you really get down to it, the line of scrimmage was won by the Libertyville Wildcats, both offensively and defensively in that first half. And, and once again, look at where they went, to their offensive left. Remember we said in the first half, they got nothing. It was not a there. Now they seem to be doing, they changed something, but it's working for them. And Kyle Brandt dives through the middle of the line and gets down to about the six yard line. Got to believe there was a motivational speech given at halftime on the entire Patriot coaching staff that, you know, kind of like, guys, we've been here, we've done this, we know what it is, and yet, just as last week, we saw the scouts totally flat in the first half, come back to second half. Right now, we're seeing the Patriots with just a little more zip. This is basically a rerun of last week, except it's a daytime game. They go left side, and Marth just gets wrestled down pushed back, but he got inside the five yard line to about the three and a half. Well, we're in big down territory right now. They can get a first down on about the one, one and a half yard line, but it brings up third and a long two, almost three yard line, three yards to go for the first. This drive will take over seven minutes at least. We're down to 5-10 left to go in the third quarter. And it's been Patriot football since the kickoff. Oh, this is textbook that you're seeing right now. Coaches couldn't draw this up any better. Kyle Brandt to the right side, and he's going to get stopped. And let's count who gets off that pile. One, two, three. I think six, maybe even seven Wildcats were in on that tackle. That was just excellent game tackling. Tim Beschel and Adam Waugh, again, the two guys at the bottom of that pile coming up. But really, that defensive unit doing a fine job this afternoon. Matt Klitsky, we've talked about Beschel. Law. These guys are really doing the job up front. Brady Sullivan, the nose tap. Patriots are taking an awful amount of time here. They've got to get going because that ball, they're against the 25 second clock. Okay, Mike Morosky actually at the nose tackle. Here it is on fourth down. Cervic rolling out, has a blocker in front, cuts it back in, and he's going to be short of the goal line. And Whoa. the Libertyville Wildcat players were fired up because they thought they stopped him on fourth down from getting a touchdown. However, as you brought up before, the Patriots can still get a first down. And they did. And they did. Big run by Adam Cervic, or Curtis Cervic, excuse me. Had some blocking out in front and then cut back inside and dove forward just to get that first down. Big piece of running by the quarterback. Well, and you talk of a game of inches. Remember, he only had to go to about the one and a half, and it appears that he just got over the one yard line. So literally by about a foot and a half to two feet, he made that first down. And they're gonna put four more seconds back on the clock. A 4.10, excuse me, actually eight seconds now. The clock ran down to 4.02. And the officials again taking control and getting everything set. So this drive now. Hmm. Almost, <laughs> almost eight minutes almost so far. And you know, from a Wildcat from a Wildcat standpoint, you can't score if you don't have the ball, and they haven't even touched it yet this half. First and goal now from the one-yard line. 
And it's Kyle Brandt, dives in, touchdown. Oh, there is one official. I'm looking. All the guys in the middle weren't signaling touchdown, but the guy on the extreme right side of the field did. Now, 14-12, two-point conversion, and we're back to a tie ball game again. And yet, remember in the first half, just before halftime, when they tried to do it, the Wildcats were able to shut them down. So this really, really becomes a big play defensively for the Cats. Yeah, remember going back to that? They went for two off the touchdown, just could not get it. And now they're going to try to pick up the two they lost and tie this one up. Stack backfield. And it's Cervic on a rollout. Oh, run it in. Run it in. And he passes, and it's complete. Two-point conversion is good as he's able to hook up with his receiver on the outside, that being Ray Shea Hill. He did, as you're yelling, oh, run it oh, in. Oh. I thought he was going to, too. He had the blocking, could have just walked right in, but he threw it. Either way, it comes up with two points, and we've got a tie ball game at 14 with 3.53 left to go in the third quarter. That drive took eight minutes, seven seconds off the clock. I'll tell you, my heart is just stopping as I watch him start to pull up and throw that ball, and I'm thinking, good God, son, if that is incomplete, don't even go to the sidelines because you're going to be dead. I mean, the coaches would probably want to just about hang him, but the bottom line is he got done what he had to do. He converted for the two-point conversion, but you talk about big, big plays. That one certainly was. And the Stevenson Patriots will kick it off. Mentioned earlier that Emily Borg was named the homecoming queen here at Libertyville High School, and after this kick, we'll go down to the sideline and have a chance to talk to her. Big day for her. Big day for all the alumni. Again, homecoming, great time. We couldn't ask for a better day to play football than we've had this afternoon. Upper 50s, Saturday afternoon, perfect conditions for football. Not a cloud in the sky, son. This is what it's all about and a tie ball game. Jeffrey Lyons to kick it off. Hamlet and Tyler Coleman in an eye. Now they break off and it's a short kick. And it's gonna be Coleman at his 22 yard line. And a nice piece of tackling by the special teams unit led by Michael Klamzerinski as he stepped in and made the play. Let's send it on down to the sidelines now. John Kazukas has Emily Bohr. Thanks Chip. Now Emily, when, that, when Jason was going around with the crown, did you really think that you'd be the one? No, I didn't. It was a big surprise, definitely. How does it feel to be homecoming queen? <laughs> um, I think it's a great honor, because as you can see, all these girls, we're, we're all really good friends and all really great girls, so to be picked, it's nice. All right, thanks a lot and congratulations. Back to you, Chip and Jerry. Tyler Coleman now to the outside, able to pick up some yardage in what looked like a lost situation for him, but Coleman does sprint ahead for a couple of yards on the play. That'll bring up a second down and eight. Credit the Patriot defense was stringing that out and finally, no, they didn't make the tackle. They just used the sideline as their 12th man on the field and they ran him out for only a yard and a half gain, two yards. And want to thank John Kazukas down the sidelines and congratulations to Emily Bohr, the homecoming queen for 1996. Libertyville High School. What's wrong with this? He gets to interview the homecoming queen and you and I, I get to sit with you. Yeah. yeah. What gives? Salzman, the ball carrier, gets across the 35 and he's going to have a first down out to the 40 yard line. 10 yard pickup by Adam Salzman, who has done a nice job coming out of the backfield. He's picked up runs of 10, 10, 18, and now 10 yards. He's got 48 on four carries, 12 yard average, and it's been off of that little inside reverse handoff. He comes from the wide side, and then it becomes a dive play. Well, and look at what's happening. We're seeing the offense start to take charge and try to assert and get the momentum back on the part of the Cats, whereas in the first half, it was the defense that set the tone. 3-12 left to go in the third quarter. Here's Salzman again. And he picks up about three before he stopped on the play. The Patriots reading that one out. Jared Reese over there to make the tackle, and joining him was Joshua Weisberg. You got to wonder when Jansen's going to take that ball, fake it, and keep it. But right now, every time he does that naked bootleg out there, he's watching to see who's reading him. Number 40 uh, for the Patriots, Kyle Brandt, is doing exactly what he has to. He has to mirror that quarterback, because if he leaves him go, the next time they will get burned. Second down and seven now. 
And it's Coleman, hands it back off to Salzman. But a nice job by Stevenson to read that. Parker Dodson steps in and holds Salzman to a short gain. If he breaks that tackle, yeah. he's got more than first down yardage. But what a job by Parker Dodson stepping in and making the play. Well, and I think what's also starting to disrupt that just a little bit is number 87 for the Patriots, uh, Rache Hill, you know, just a huge guy. What is he, 6'5", 248, doing a good job of turning the play back in defensively. Third down and five, big play here. Patriots looking for a stop. And Jansen will roll out to his right, fires it, and it's complete to Salzman. Cuts it back inside and is wrapped up at the 30-yard line. 25-yard uh -oh. pickup. And, and what a big pickup it was. But when they go back and watch the films of this, Chip, deep down the field for the Wildcats, wide open, there was nobody with them. Number 88, Jonathan Harlow, was totally uncovered. There was nobody beyond him. He threw to the short man, but Harlow had 10 yards between him and the nearest defender. Got to believe they're going to come back to that at some point because nobody, whether it a broken coverage or they just totally ignored him, but Harlow was wide open. And Salzman, the ball carrier. Very short gain this time. Got maybe a yard on the play that time. You know, coming into this ball game, Andy Jansen was looking to set the record for yards in a season by a quarterback, passing yards by a quarterback. The record was held by, or is held, I should say, by Dave Van Eyten with 1,239 yards. He did it back in 1981. Coming in, Jansen was 227 yards shy of that. So far, he's got 104 yards through the air this afternoon. Look at On that. The ground, smite with the first down, taken down at the 11-yard line. <laughs> the guy's running like a, just a train, his head's down, and he's just pounding people. And you think, geez, dodge to the left, dodge to the right, there's a hole there. Heck with it, I'll run over him, he said. Good power, just plain motion straight ahead. Brandon Smythe, 5'11", 195-pound senior. Just his third carry, but it's good enough for a first down. 27 yards on the ground by Smythe. And Jansen rolling to his left. Now he's under some pressure. Fires it to the outside. There's Coleman. And he's knocked out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. Kyle Brandt right there on the coverage, but Jansen had to run for his life with some big white jerseys right in his face. You know, and earlier we talked about he was unable to check off receivers. Credit him that time with knowing where his safety valve, he had Coleman out there in the flat, and he, when he was in trouble, he knew where to go. And here, you know, with 19 seconds to go in the third quarter, we're seeing the Wildcats finally, you know, get their hands in the ball and do something with it. Jansen, seven of 12, 106 yards, and one interception so far today. 19 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Smythe wrapped up in the backfield. Nowhere to go. Adam Butler with the tackle. And I've been saying Smythe, check that, Smith. I apologize to the family for that one. Yeah, all he cares about is the ball and the yardage. Right now, they get a win. He could care less what I call. Winner is a good title to have, though. Right now, we've got a 14-14 tie after three quarters of play. 12 minutes of football remain here at Libertyville High School, and we'll have it for you when we come back after this. Getting accepted to college wasn't easy, but Tony kept his nose in the books, studied hard for the SATs, yet he faced an even tougher problem, how to pay for it all. The answer, the Air National Guard. While serving his country and community, Tony's getting the benefits of tuition assistance, the Montgomery GI Bill, and a steady paycheck. The Air National Guard. Getting ready to start the fourth quarter here at Libertyville High School. The Stevenson Patriots and Libertyville Wildcats are tied at 14 as you get a look at the Stevenson sideline. The fans with something to cheer about. Their undefeated season on the line right now. And they're 12 minutes away, if they can put some points on the board, from keeping it that way. But Libertyville, right now with the football, is facing a third down and 10 with the ball at the Patriot 12-yard line. 
heck of a ball game so far. It opened up with Adam Salzman scoring on a 10-yard touchdown run with 6.13 to go in the first quarter. Libertyville was up 7-0. That was set up by a Mike Ward interception. A little later with 3.02 left to go, Tyler Coleman took a shovel pass and went 19 yards for the touchdown. Libertyville was up 14-0 going into the second quarter, and that's when Stevenson came back. Curtis Zervik scored on a six-yard touchdown run. They went for two, didn't get it, and Libertyville had an eight-point lead at 14-6. But here in the, th or actually back in the third quarter now, as we get ready to start the fourth, the Stevenson Patriots opened up with an eight-minute, seven-second drive that was capped by a Kyle Brandt one-yard touchdown run to tie it all up at 14 after the two-point conversion. And Jansen has it. Able to escape Ray Shea Hill. Fires it, and it's picked off. Intercepted by and Steve Struby. Then he lost the handle. Flags are flying, but the Patriots have the football back. I gotta believe with where that flag is laying that it's probably against the Wildcats because it's behind the line of scrimmage and it's where a holding penalty should have occurred. And if that indeed is the case, the ball will rem the Patriots will remain in possession. Yeah, let's see what happens because I saw that flag coming in as Struby was returning that ball. I don't know what what we've got, but plenty happening on that play. Oh, they're they're gonna wave it off. We had a near sack to begin with as Hill shagged down Jansen. Then he throws an interception, and as Struby returns it, he loses yep. the handle. A flag comes in, but the Patriots recover. A full game's worth of action on one play. And, and you know, just prior to that, the, I was looking back through my notes, and I'm thinking, boy, we have not had a lot of turnovers in this game. We had that early interception, but no fumbles. They've really done a good job of ball, you know, possession, and then boom. But remember, he rolled to his left and threw back crossbody, and that's tough to do. Jansen's been picked twice this afternoon as Kyle Brandt gets across the 25 to the 26 yard line. And now Brandt with 85 yards and 28 carries. And remember, we're tied at 14 14, and the last time the Patriots had the ball, they started the quarter with it. Here it was a few seconds into the quarter, but they maintained it for more than eight minutes. If they do something like that again, you know, we're back to you can't score if you don't have the ball mentality, and, and it's certainly the Wildcats. That was an excellent opportunity that they came away with nothing. Well, I was amazed. That was as textbook as it gets. Coaches love that. They had to be ecstatic with that one. Here's Clancy to the left side. Adam Waugh puts a helmet on him and they stop him at the 29 yard line. He picked up about three on that play. But again, it's been a tough day for Clancy. Just 45 yards on 11 carries. They have been watching him like a hawk. And fortunately for Stevenson, Kyle Brandt has been picking up some good yardage this afternoon. And you know, if you keep going like that, Clancy's bound to break one. He's not the type of guy yep. you're gonna hold all game. He can do something. Well, and that's the thing. You know about his explosiveness. Here's third and long. Big play for the Wildcat defense if they want to get the ball back for their own. Third down and five. And Cervic back to throw, looking for Clancy. And he's got him. First down as he's out to midfield. 21-yard pickup on the completion from Cervic to Clancy. So he couldn't get it done rushing, but he finds a way to get behind the defense in a passing route and gets a huge first down. And, you know, just prior to the snap chip, the linebackers, the inside and the outside linebackers changed position. And you got to wonder, because Clancy's coming out of the backfield, if somehow there wasn't a blown coverage because he was behind his man by three, four yards, and it was enough to complete and get a first down. 21-yard pickup, first and 10. And Marth just fires up the middle inside the 45 to about the 42-yard line, an eight-yard gain. Keep your eyes glued. Every time these backs for the Patriots go through, and they've got to be taught this because they're all doing it. They couldn't emulate each other. Someone is really coaching them well. When they get hit, they start to spin or to turn sideways like we're not going to give you a full target to take down, and that's where they're getting some of their extra yardage. Guys are fun to watch in that backfield, never giving up on a play. And Kyle Brandt has the first down and then some out to the 37 yard line. So about a five yard pickup for Brandt that time. But Marth coming off the bench, Joe Marth, the 5'8 junior, steps onto the field, carries the ball four times, has 18 yards. <laughs> so a guy, you know, big games like this, 
you figure the big players are going to come up. You hope they have good games, but it's usually somebody that you don't expect that comes in, gives you a spark. And so far, Marth in that third quarter helped out, carrying the ball three times, got 10 yards, and picks up eight on his last carry. And here he comes once again, down to the 28-yard line. And there's eight yards up the middle. Well, and the explosiveness off the ball, that was just a quick dive to him. He literally was through the line of scrimmage before the, the Wildcat defense even reacted. But I also watched what happened after the play. After he was through, and as Zervik carried out his fake to the other backs, the linebackers went for the fake. So Marth being the unheralded you know, player is not getting the attention that obviously he deserves. 8.35 left to go in the ball game. And Marth again, he's gonna have the first down, stopped at the 21 yard line. That time he picks up seven. He is just running tough for them, and yet you gotta wonder how long they're gonna keep going to him, going to him, and all of a sudden just real innocently or real quietly, they're gonna slip it off to Clancy or he's gonna get behind them on a pass play. They're gonna ignore him because they're realizing what Marth can do. Stevenson really setting a tone in this second half. Boy, that eight-minute drive to open up, and now coming back here in the fourth. Marth again, now he's down to the 20, so he picked up only a yard that time, wrapped up on the play by Justin Trudeler. So a short one for Marth that time. But yeah, as you were saying before, and, and we were thinking about it, you keep plugging away, plugging away, and with the ability of Clancy and Brandt to break something, you keep hammering with Marth, who's getting some good yardage, and you can say, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you know what? When you have those two aces in the hole, you can, you can come right back and make something happen. And here comes Clancy, and he bounces inside. Short gain to about the 27-yard line. Beschel on the stop. Joining him on that tackle was Trudelar once again. Credit the Patriot offense, you know, and here's a test for them again. Before in the first half, we kept talking about these third and a foot, third and inches. Now they've been third and long this half, and they've been able to convert on quite a few of these, and that's why their drive went downfield before for the touchdown, and now that's why they're maintaining possession. And not only are they chewing up clock, they've had it for four minutes now, but it's third and long, and they're headed towards the end zone. Third down and six. Oh. And they gave it to Marth, and he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Trudelar once again comes up with a third tackle on that series, and it's a big one. A very short gain of only a yard, and that'll bring up a fourth and five. And it looks as though the Patriots are going to go for it. Here comes Cervic back into the huddle after talking to Bill Mitz. Well, you know, and I'm watching Trudelar just to see how he's doing it. He's against number 75 for the Patriots, just a big guy at 6'2", 210, Joshua Leith, and he's just playing beating him and throwing him off and still making the tackle. Just a good one-man effort right there. Fourth and five at the Wildcats 16-yard line. Cervic rolls out. And he's got room for that first down. And let's see where he's marked at. Matt Hansen came flying up from corner to knock him out. And depending on the spot, he did get it. He just got that first down. Oh, <laughs> boy, hold your heart. I mean, every time you see them, it's not like they're making it by big chunks, although they have, but so many of these crucial plays, fourth down there, and he just barely gets it. Boy, what's that tell you about head coach Bill Mitz for Stevenson? He, has he got faith in that offensive unit or what? Fourth and five, you said in the, the passing play, obviously, that breaks down, your quarterback runs it, but to take chances on fourth and five, that's great. And here's Kyle Brandt, dives forward to the five yard line. When you got running backs like that and you've got receivers, and, and you know that Servic can throw the ball and do it well, he just hasn't had to so far this season, but they've gone to alternative plays, they've gone into their bag and pulled a few more out today, and Servic has become a main man in these rollouts. With both teams having run the ball as much as they have here in the second half, we're down to 5.35 left to go in the ball game. Very quickly played second half. And it was Marth, and he was met by Trudelar again. No gain on the play that time. It'll bring up a third down and five. I'll tell you, that was Brute against Brute right there. He comes in 
Marth comes in with a head of steam. Somebody forgot to tell Trudelar that, hey, he's supposed to get through untouched because he really laid the wood to him. Third down and five coming up. I think it's four down territory the oh, way yeah. that Bill Mitz plays this. The mid, the 50 yard line's been four down territory yeah. for them today. And now there's some confusion going on. Coming back out onto the field for the Libertyville Wildcats, Tim Metzger. And it might have been a slight of equipment uh, chin strap. It was Ron, perhaps he had to come back to the sideline. That bought the Patriots a little bit of time, too, and they'll be more than happy to take that. Exactly, and Cervic did exactly what you would want him to. He went over to the sidelines, had a good conference with his coach, and came back in. It was like a freebie. Third down and five. And they give it to Clancy, and he bursts through down near the goal line. That's going to be good enough for a first down. And Tim Beschel. Comes up a little slowly, slightly shaken up, but he's going to stay in the ball game. I think Beschel is still hurting on his left shoulder, and he's waving it off like I'm okay, but I go back to the first half. He really laid the wood on an in run over about the 30-yard line on the far side of the field, and he didn't get up right from that one, and I think whatever happened is still with him because that he's got a stinger. He seems to be shaking it off. You see him waving his left arm and, and trying to get some feeling back into it. It's short by the length of, oh, about half a yard, and it's, you know, obviously four down territory, but if the Patriots want to go ahead here, there's their opportunity. If the Wildcats want to save the ball game, this is it. Boy, I, I thought he had that first down. He dove out, and when he basically was down by the goal line, and as the officials came up, they were moving further back. His knee must have hit beforehand. Yep. So it'll bring up a fourth and short. The Patriots can still get a first down. 440 left to go in the ball game. We're tied at 14. And here comes Kyle Brandt. Pushes the pile into the end zone for a touchdown. And where did they go? They went to their offensive right behind number 78. Big Sean Coughlin, 6'1", 261 pounds, who just moved a mass of humanity. Remember what was happening in that drive on the other side, their left offensive tackle, number 75, Leith, was, you know, let's face it, Trudelar was manhandling them and making some real big stops. When they wanted the short yardage, they didn't go left. They went behind their big guy on the right and got what they needed. Now they'll go for the conventional point after. Jeffrey Lyons will do the kicking. Out of the hold by Jurassic, the kick is up, and it's good. 4.32 left to go in the ball game, and Stevenson takes their first lead of the afternoon at 21-14. You've got to be impressed with the way the Patriots have come back. Let's go back to how they got the ball. Remember, the Wildcats were down there just within the shadows of the goalpost on the right offense, our offensive right down here on the field, and they couldn't get it done and they turned it over when Jansen rolled to his left through an ill-advised pass. It was intercepted and the Patriots went the length of the field. And look what they did time-wise. Almost seven minutes, seven and a half minutes they took off again. Boy, it just working the clock just beautifully. As Tim Beschel, you see on the sideline talking to the trainer right now, trying to shake off whatever it is that's ailing him. And, and he did take a pop on the one play, as you said earlier. And then on that last drive, took a shot around the five yard line about a play or two before the touchdown and came up a little gingerly. Well, oh, this that guy, I think he's coming back though. Oh yeah, if this game is to be won, there's, you know, a real simple. The offense has got to go down the field. They have to maintain possession. They have to put it in the end zone. Field goal doesn't do them any good. They need a touchdown and a two point conversion to win. And Beschel is up and walking on the sideline. And here's the kick. And it takes a bounce and it's picked up. Leroy Tolbert brings it out to the 35-yard line. So Stevenson, either by design or by accident, has kept the ball away from the deep men, Hamlet and Coleman. They don't want those two returning the ball at all. Now that kick, <laughs> the way it went off, I, I guarantee was not playing how it came off his foot, but they'll take that effect. So long as those two don't get their hands on it, I think Stevenson feels they've done a good job on the special teams. You don't think the dead duck spiral oh. is in the playbook? <laughs> it was like a top coming off his foot. 
First and 10 at the 35. Here's Salzman going to the left and not going really anywhere. Well read by the right side of that Patriot defense. Ray Shea Hill right there once again and joining him on that tackle, 66, Parker Dodson. May want to take that play out of their offensive scheme for today. It's that long developing, you know, slot man from the right running behind the quarterback. When they do the inside handoff, when he comes straight down the line and they hand it off inside, they seem to have a little bit more success. I think he's getting to the hole quicker then. They're getting some nicer blocks up front that have opened up some holes. They got a yard on the play. This time they go straight up the middle, and this play picks up yet another yard. So it's going to be a third down and eight as Smith falls down after getting through the line of scrimmage. Difference there between two running backs. Not that Smith is not a good one, but Clancy and Brandt seem to be able to run through those kind of almost arm tackles. Really didn't get hit. He just kind of went down after being brushed. Third down and eight at the 37 yard line. And Jansen's back to throw. And he launches it downfield for a receiver incomplete. He Behind stopped. Jurassic was the wide receiver, the intended wide receiver on that play, Jonathan Harlow. And he started to try to adjust to the ball instead of running further down. I think he saw Jansen getting flushed and was trying to hold up because he thought he was open. Like, here I am, just throw it. And now he's just kind of grabbing that face mask on the sideline, like, what happened? What did I do? Well, you continue in the pattern. You know, the only time you stop is when you're coming back towards the quarterback, and you then you got to continue that motion because he thinks when you're running, he thinks you're going to continue running, and it's, oh, to have that one again because he was behind his man. He was open. Had to be a perfectly thrown ball, too, because Jurassic was in front. And if it's thrown a little under that, he knocks that ball down or picks it off. Harlow at 6'3", has some height on Jurassic at 5'10". So you've got some room to play with. But that one had a little too much air under it. And as you said, it looked like Harlow may have stopped on the pattern. And it brings up a fourth down and eight. Not only here is the tail of the game, everything rests on this play right at this point in time. But it's also a real tale as to what's happened. Last week we had all scouts in the second half and just enough of the Patriots to continue to win it, and yet nothing from the scouts in the first half. Today the Patriots barely got something going right at the end, and then in the second half they were able to turn it around and do something offensively, and it just just a different ball game out of the Patriots, and, and they've come out and taken hold when they had to. Biggest play for Libertyville today. Fourth and eight, the ball at their own 37-yard line. 21-14 Stevenson, 3-12 left to go in the ball game. Salzman going to the wide side. And Jansen drops back, fires it to the outside, and it's incomplete. Well short of the first down would have been that completion had it been pulled in. And they turn it over on downs to the Stevenson Patriots. Well, that's one you've, you've got to have a pattern that takes you beyond the first down marker yep. and let it go. Just five yards and hope they run for the rest. Uh, you can't count on that because you know the Patriots are going to give them something short. They're going to not want anything deep, so the man appears to be open. And as you said, you if you're going to be open, make sure it's far enough downfield so that when you get popped and you go down, you've got the first down. 3.06 left, Libertyville and Stevenson both have all their timeouts as Kyle Brandt takes it to the outside and gets knocked down on the play. Good piece of tackling by Matt Hansen. And Brandt doesn't pick up anything on that play, in fact, lost a yard. Big series, very, very big series with 2.45 on the clock and it ticking away. You know the Patriots are going to try to use as much time as they can. And granted, they both have timeouts, but I guess I just don't foresee the Patriots using any of theirs. No, Libertyville not going in and taking one either. Down to two and a half minutes left to go in the ball game. And it's Marth into the middle. 
Got back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard more, and that's now, it. Now is when I would call, and they're going out there, because now with it being third down coming up, you know, you don't want to let them take and use up anything big. And if you don't hold them on third down, then you don't deserve the chance to get your hands on the ball. With a timeout on the field, why don't we send it back down to John Kazukas, who's got a couple of guests with him now. John, take it away. Thanks a lot, Thanks a lot, Chip. And we're, I'm joined now by Pat. Uh, president and former LHS TV presidents Dave Pedersen and Nick Diarmendi. Along with them is Temple Murphy, systems engineer for LHS for Libertyville High School. Now, Nick, what is LHS TV doing this year? Well, right now we're trying to take care of uh, getting a good rec record of the games and, you know, try to tape them and get them on the Jones Intercable. And we're also just trying to get a record of everything that goes on, you know, the assemblies and the main events that happen at LHS. Dave, what's homecoming like for you now that you're a freshman in college? It's a very interesting experience to come back and uh, see everything that I used to be doing, and it's very exciting to see that it's being carried on in, in an honorable tradition, and I'm very excited to see that there are a lot of new people, and they're very excited about LHS TV. Temple, how has LHS, LHS TV changed since you were a student here at LHS? Well, with the advancements in technology, it's a constant revamping of our systems and our, our implementation, and the curriculum is developed for the TV class. And I guess that's the big, that's the major change in, in LHS TV that I see. Even this year, we're completely revamping our studio, and uh, that's that's part of the major changes going on in the club right now. Thanks a lot, guys. Back up to you, Chip. Thanks a lot. On third and nine, here's Servant keeping the football with a blocker and. He's driven out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. That should be enough for a first down. And it is, but man, if he doesn't get the first down and goes out of bounds, it stops the clock, but it's all mute right now because it's enough for the Patriots to maintain possession. Tough one there, the quarterback rolling out, hangs onto the football. Nobody defensively able to come up and try to stop him after he picked up that first down. Well, you know, and that's something we really hadn't seen the Patriots do last week or this week, even in the first half yet. When they've needed yardage, notice every time it's been a quarterback rollout. And flags go flying. 2.13 left to go in the ball game. And we'll check the penalty here. You know, in that sideline interview, you could just catch a little bit. They were talking about what things have changed. I think the most obvious, the kids are bigger, they're faster, they're stronger. They're just so much more intensity, so much more available to them in terms of weight rooms and options and, and training methods. Uh, tough out there in the field these days. And a Croachman penalty on the Wildcats makes it first and five now at the Libertyville 20. Tell you what, you got to have a little bit of talent, though, to go along with that. You can be as big as a house and as quick as a cat, but if you don't know what to do with that football when you got it. Doesn't do you much good, but guys like Kyle Brand, who just dove across the 15 to the 14 yard line, know exactly what to do with it. They have a lot of skills and a lot of tools. You just can't help but be impressed with what you see out of the Patriots, and, and it's another first down for them, but these backs have, have run so hard, and they've always, not always, but for the most part, when they've needed five, they've gotten five and a quarter. They've gotten just enough to get that first down. Instead of going and coming up, you know, a yard short or half a yard short, they're getting that first down, and that's just unbelievable effort on each, you know, every one of them, from Marth to Brandt to Clancy to Servek, they have all done an outstanding job offensively this half to take the ball and make something with it. 140 left to go now in the ball game. And Marth, and he gets drilled in the backfield and pushed backwards. Several Libertyville Wildcats in on that tackle. And leading the way was Tim Metzger. And the clock continues to move at 120 left. You know, you take a look at what's happened this afternoon as well. You mentioned turnovers before. Cervic has thrown one interception, but these running backs have not coughed up the football. Right. In fact, if I remember back to last week, they didn't turn it over either on the ground. Well, you know, and turnover ratio is something that is always so critical. You know, these guys have always been to the plus in the turnover ratio, and, and ball possession, it's back to that. If you don't have it, you can't score, and they have just done a good job of maintaining it. Kyle Brandt breaks into the secondary and scores. 18-yard touchdown run by Kyle Brandt, and that's the final nail in the coffin with 47 seconds left to go in the ballgame.
Stevenson now has a 27 to 14 lead. You know, depending how people are going to read about this, what kind of job the sports writers do, and there are people from the Trib and the Herald and the and the New Sun and a host of area reporters around here. Someone picking up the paper tomorrow is, or hearing this score on the radio, they're not going to know what a hard-fought contest this really, really was. We see the Patriots go for their 28th point, and it looks like they convert it there to make it 28-14. And, and someone's going to read it and say, sure, they just rolled over him and they did a job. And no, it hasn't been that way. The Wildcats have just put on one outstanding effort. And remember, obviously, it doesn't look like they're going to put this into the W column here at a 28-14 deficit. They still only have five victories. And you alluded to that earlier with playoffs. That magic number of six is still a week away from them. Up next for Libertyville is West Chicago, who is winless coming into this weekend. So by looking at records, you would say, well, you're going to get a victory next week and get in. But, I, you know, this is a team that would rather have won this game and that one. But they know their backs are against the wall if they want to get into the playoffs come next week. As for the Stevenson Patriots, well, they made their reservations for the postseason last week. The victory over Lake Forest put them at 7-0. and Well, actually, the week before, I should say. At 6-0, and When they sure. were 6-0. and Then they went to 7-0. and Then it was a matter of wanting to go in as conference champions. And one team stands in their way of a perfect regular season, and that's the Zion Benton Zebes next week. Uh, and if the Patriots made reservations, you could say this is an upgrade to first class that's right it. now because they have... They have really, it was a heavyweight fight and they responded to the bell. They were knocked down and they were reeling, but credit them with they didn't give up and they came back when they had to. And here's the kick, a low one that bounces around and is picked up by Brian Hamlet. And he's unable to get out of the hands of one tackler as he stopped at the 29 yard line with 41 seconds left. So the Stevenson Patriots, even with the loss last week, will have the North Suburban Conference title. They knock off Libertyville, they knocked off Lake Forest. Coming into this week, as I said, Stevenson was 5-0 in conference. Lake Forest and Libertyville were right behind at 5-1. Libertyville will drop to 5-2 in conference. Lake Forest would only hope that in, insofar as record's concerned, they could have an even one with Stevenson with a loss next week, but the Patriots don't want any part of that as this pass is completed to Tom Joush on the outside. Hmm. So in effect, it's theirs. I don't know, sharing titles and things like that. Hey, you beat everybody, basically. You beat your main challengers in Libertyville and Lake Forest. It's all yours, and a victory next week just seals the deal completely. Well, and you got to be impressed with this team. I mean, they have really... These Wildcats came out and played one outstanding game against them, and yet they came they came back to the, and there's an outstanding catch. Oh, they're going to say he made it, too. For a minute, I thought they were going to wave him out. But the Wildcats have played one heck of a game, but the Patriots responded. Brian Hamlet with the reception. 29 seconds left to go in the ball game, And what a stretch run for Stevenson, too. Three of your top contenders happen to be your last three teams that you face. Lake Forest, Libertyville, and then Zion to close it out. Well, and if, if you are going to be conference champions, you got to beat the horses right next to you, and they've done it and done it quite convincingly. And you're staring at 2-0 and o between those three right now. And as the screen is set up, here's the pass to Hamlet, and he gets down to about the 39-yard line. Still short of the first down, the clock moving, under 20 seconds left. And we're down to 10 seconds. Jansen heaves it up in the air, looking long, and it's tapped in the air, incomplete. Stops the clock with three seconds left. 